Hey guys, it's DevGMR and I'm here today with a new development video using Unity. So I just wanted to let everyone know that all my videos are going to be kind of a mix of me overlaying audio onto some video clips, kind of showing what's going on, walking through certain processes. And some of them I'm going to be doing in a lifetime like this video. This this is going to be great because it's going to help me kind of get used to doing this, especially considering it's my first ever channel uh, related to this kind of stuff. So what I'm going to try to be doing today is going through a tutorial uh, that's actually been provided by Unity themselves. It's part of their Learn series and it's called the Carding Micro Game. So, for the most part, uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's a 3D kart racing game that you can mod and customize. And this is the interface of Unity. So I've actually already completed this tutorial before, but I kind of wanted to give you a quick glimpse into what the whole thing looks like. So this is your main scene. On the left side is the hierarchy. On the bottom is the project files. and on the right is the inspector tab and the tutorials tab. So I'm not going to be giving my own personal tutorial on anything. I just wanted to kind of give you an idea of what interface I'm using if you were kind of curious about it. So this game scene that's already here actually came with the Unity file. So I don't have to worry too much about making my own models yet, doing animations or anything like that. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to press play and it'll take us into the game itself and we can kind of get a view of what it looks like. So at this point I didn't actually realize that the game audio was going to completely overtake my voice and I had to manually insert this voiceover. What I was trying to say is that the controls for this game were the typical up, down, left and right for cart control. The rest of the game window is pretty self-explanatory. In the top right corner, you can see a timer for the current lap, a placeholder for lap times, and details on the best lap of the session. So the first part of the, the tutorial is the playtest, and this is where we make a simple change and playtest the game. So this opens up a grayed out window and it kind of gives you, it gives you instructions on exactly what you have to do. So I'm going to be starting out, and I'll press start down in the bottom right corner go into play mood. So we've already done this, so I'm just going to quickly uh, select and deselect this button so we can get in and out of the window and continue with the tutorial. All right, so on the left we have the hierarchy window, and then we have the game object. So there's stuff like cart, the track manager, finish line, checkpoints, etc. Uh, so it wants us to go into the cart object, so I'm going to do that. And now click an object in the hierarchy window to select it. All right, so I selected that, go into next. There we go. And this is the inspector window. So this shows most of the details about the game object. So there's things like transform, its position, and X, Y, Z coordinates, the rotation. Uh, we have input controls. We have cart movement. Uh, we have the actual physics based on the rigid body. There's collider details, there's a script for racing, there's a script for card animation. So just to kind of get a view into what this inspector window looks like, now we're going to be moving ahead. So what we're trying to do in this part of the tutorial is change the top speed. So what I'm going to do is go into these default stats and increase the top speed. So let's put it up to 50 and press next and see what happens. So after changing the top speed, there's not a very noticeable change in how fast the cart is moving. This probably means that we aren't accelerating fast enough to reach that top speed. It probably also explains why my lap times in this run aren't just as good as they were the last time around. I can definitely notice that the card is a little bit harder to control though. Now just for some fun, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into this acceleration and see what will happen if we put it up to 50. So we're going to 10 times the acceleration go into the game. Oh wow, okay. <laughs> no, where is he going? 
Stop, stop, stop. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I wonder what'll happen if we go off this hill. Oh, just went through it. And now we're falling into infinity. So I'm going to stop that there. All right, so that was that was pretty interesting. Uh, we can have an idea. So one thing that I haven't actually shown yet is that you can zoom out of the window and get an idea of what the whole world looks like. And all these objects are modifiable. So there's like clouds, there's the land, there's hills, there's these blob looking things. Those might be hills too. Uh, we have trees and buildings, etc. So I'm going to move into the second part of the tutorial and that is the editor UI. Those are the main controls, the views and the windows. Do I want to save the changes? Yeah, sure. Let's save them. All right. So we'll learn more about the Unity editor, which is super helpful as you modify your game, start to below to begin. All right. So we have the hierarchy and scene once again, we've already went through this, so we know what's there. So now let's try the hand tool. And this will allow us to navigate through the window. All right, so that's super interesting. We get a nice pan view of the scene. And let's move forward. And we also have an orbit tool. So if I hold down Alt, it switches to this little eye, eye, eye icon. Pardon. <laughs> I don't know why that was hard, so hard to say. But now we can pan around or orbit around a part of the scene. So that's really cool. It kind of gives us some perspective from all kinds of different angles. All right, so moving forward, we have the zoom scene, which I've already kind of shown. This is the mouse wheel kind of scrolling in and scrolling out. So that's super interesting. And now we have the project window highlighted at the bottom. So, so far what it's showing is a bunch of different models. So there's the building, there's the cart, there's start, finish, uh, there's some tracks. Not 100% what these blue square, uh, blue cubes are yet, but once we get into it, I'm sure we'll figure it out. Or it might even say here, assets or files that make up your models, your project, for example, 3D models, textures, audio files. Okay, cool. So they could be audio files, textures, other models, I guess, other stuff on top of that as well. All right, so that was awesome. So we've already made it through two tutorials. I mean, that's a great start. I'm really not sure how long this video is going to be. My goal has been to be making videos that are about 5 to 10, maybe at most 15 minutes long. But I guess depending on the content that I'm going to be working on, they might be a little bit longer or a little bit shorter. So this is probably going to be one of the longer videos. So bear with me. I'll try to cut some things as I feel necessary. But for now, I'm going to continue with the tutorial. So now we can edit colors, which is the third part of the tutorial. All right, so let's make the game more colorf colorful by changing the material of the cart. So start to learn how, select and frame the object. Okay, so let's select the cart. And by pressing F, we can actually frame the cart, which is a really neat and useful feature. It automatically lets you zoom in to the cart object or the selected object. And now we can go into select material. So uh, the project window is where you find all the assets available to use in your project, which includes materials. So select the cart racer material. So I guess that's specific to this cart racer or might be all cart racers. And now we can change the albedo. So what I'm going to do is click this box right here and move this around to see how the character color changes. So that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, this looks really interesting, but let's give him a nice red tint, maybe like a darker red, something like that. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So we can leave that. I'm not too sure what this changes. Oh, okay, that's just the default color. Okay, so we'll keep it at that. So now we'll go into the next window and play test the new color. So we all know what's going to happen. We're going to go back into the game and we can actually see what the character looks like. Right, that looks pretty sweet. So I'm gonna end that right there, and that is another tutorial completed. Wow, at this rate, we might actually be able to figure out this software in a week and sell a AAA game in a month. Yeah, who am I kidding? Uh, all right, so let's let's see how to add a building next. So prefabs are a game object with components and properties and stored as an asset. It can be reused anywhere you want in the game. Okay, yada yada yada. 
So drag prefab to scene. All right, so they want us to drag a building short into the scene. So I, I guess all we have to do is drag this building onto the scene and kind of see what that does. Cool, that was actually really simple. Now I see why Unity is so popular. I mean, if, if you can do something with, with a simple drag, like that is amazing. All right, so now they want us to move it and you can reposition it by using these arrow keys. All right, that is awesome. So I will move forward with this. And now you can also rotate and scale. So I've tried this before and it's really cool because you can rotate. I know there's actually, if you look right here, as I change the building rotation, this changes as well. So the position's changing, the rotation's changing. So I'm, I'm the type of person who likes even numbers and I'd rather, I'd much rather go into the actual rotation and just change it to something like 180 or 90 or I guess it really depends on the orientation of the general project. So I'm going to leave it where it's at here and go into the scale tool. And now scaling scales in the direction that is shown or indicated by these arrows. I guess they're not arrows or cubes. So we can scale in any, in one of the three directions that are available here. So I'll, I'll make this a, a really small building just for now. And now we'll move next to continue. All right, so that, that was it. I guess we've already added a, a building to the game and I'll, I'll just kind of pan around to see what that looks. Isn't this cool? I mean, look, look what you can do. You can just kind of like go into this whole scene. Let's see what happens if you click, okay, click, delete. Wow, and Control Z works the same way. So you can delete objects just by clicking them. You can undo stuff, Control Z. Let's see, Control Y. Yeah, Control Y works too, awesome. So I'm starting to like this platform more and more. Uh, what's next is create a build of your game and share it to the web. So I've actually tried this before and I'm not going to worry too much about it because uh, I had certain issues with building the game to HTML. I fixed that in the last time, in the first time, sorry, that I made this project. So I'm not going to worry about that. Just trust that it works. Um, in the next video, if I do can decide to continue with this project, I may make a few changes. Actually, you know what, since we're already talking about it, just give me a second. I'm going to try to do something. That one is hopefully the one. So let's get back into this one last time. Come on, you got this, you got this, you got this. All right, all right, we're making progress. There we go. No, are you kidding? Are you kidding? So it looks like he just stops and that is where everything ends. All right, so, wow, that was a little bit of waste of time. Uh, luckily I only took like 10 minutes doing that, but I did not think that that was gonna happen. I didn't think it would prevent you from going off the end of a track. Uh, it's not like I was trying to do anything crazy there. Like this guy was just testing out the waters in the Unity environment. And I guess they don't want him driving off ramps, but that's okay. Anyways, guys, uh, thanks for watching. I'm hoping to bring something interesting into the next video and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell for more videos in the future.
Talk to you later.